Let's take this a little bit further. We've already looked at the effect of AC on an individual resistor, an inductor and a capacitor. In the real world, circuits usually comprise of a mixture of at least two of those and probably three. So in this circuit, we have a resistor and an inductor. This could be something like an electromagnet or it could be the coil from an AC motor where this represents the winding of a magnet or the winding inside a motor and this represents the resistance of the conductors that make up that winding. So this is the resistance of the wire if you like. Let's talk about the properties. The resistor has resistance in ohms. The inductor has reactance in ohms. In an AC circuit which comprises of resistance and reactance together, the total opposition to current flow now has the new name. And it's impedance, and it's given the letter Z. So a combination of resistance and reactance is now called impedance. Before I do the next bit, I just need to remind you that you must remember there's a 90 degree phase shift between anything that is resistive and anything that is reactive. So with that in mind, I'm going to produce a triangle, and it's an important one. Resistance, whatever the value of that is, let's draw it horizontally. So there is resistance. We then have reactance, which is 90 degrees shifted from it. So there is reactance. In this case, it's an inductor, so it's XL. And the result of resistance and reactance together is called impedance, Z. So all of these are measured in ohms, and this is an important triangle, which we'll meet later. It's called the impedance triangle. We can calculate impedance using these values. And that is an extremely common exam question, and it's very important. We'll do it shortly. So the formula you're going to need is Z equals, and if you look at this, it's a right angle triangle. We can use Pythagoras to find Z. It's the square root of R squared plus XL squared. Voila. So that is important. OK, the third and final part. If we come back to this, this is a series circuit. So current is common to all parts. So that same current flows through the resistor and through the inductor. So when I draw a phasor diagram, I'm going to draw current first. So that's the beginnings of my phasor diagram. To continue the phasor diagram, we need to plot the voltages on it. So we need the voltage across R and ask yourself the question, what's the relationship with voltage and current in a resistor on an AC circuit and they're in phase? So that means the voltage across the resistor Appears there. It's in phase with the current. And then we come to the inductor. What's the relationship with voltage and current in an inductor? Current lags voltage. There's the current. So the voltage is going to be there and the current is going to lag behind it. So, oops, there is the voltage across the inductor. Uh, so once again, that's a right angle. And if we go sort of dot to dot, like so, so everything is nice and perfect, a parallelogram, then the result of this, this is our supply voltage. 
finally the angle between your supply voltage and the supply current which is drawn on there this is our supply current supply voltage supply current the angle is called phi we met phi previously you've met capital phi for flux and lowercase phi is used a lot in electrical and science work for angles okay so another calculation you may need to do is to calculate the voltage across the resistor and calculate the voltage across the inductor and we're going to use Ohm's law so I can determine the two voltages VR use Ohm's law V equals I times R so this voltage is a result of the current going through the resistance. This one is Ohm's law again. So the voltage across the inductor, V equals I, still Ohm's law, but we're going to use XL. Okay, so this is VL and this is VR. So these values are basically what is going here. Sorry, VL is there, VR is this one. Okay, so let's have a look at an example calculation and I'll do a lengthy example which contains all of the component parts that you're likely to be able to need to calculate. So let's read this. A 200 millihenry inductor has a resistance of 40 ohms. It is connected to a 230 volt 50 hertz supply find these are the things we're going to need to find inductive reactance impedance the circuit current the voltage pd across the resistor the voltage pd across l so let's do a very quick sketch of the circuit high speed sketch doesn't have to be rocket science so 230 volts 50 hertz, the resistance of the coil was 40 ohms, and this was 200 millihenries. So I'm going to work through this quite quickly, and you can then stop the video at any point and check your way through it. Okay, part A. We need to find the inductive reactance. XL is 2 pi. FL, put the numbers in, 2 pi times the frequency, which is 50, times the value of L, which is 200 milli, 200, times 10 to the minus 3. That comes to 62.84 ohms. Next step, find the impedance of the circuit. So that's the formula we just covered. Z equals the square root of R squared plus XL squared. Put the numbers in. Square root of R squared, that's 40 squared, plus XL, which is 62.84 squared. And it's the square root of the whole lot. If you put that in the calculator, I'm hoping you'll come up with 74.5 Ohms. Just make some space. Okay. It'll do. So part C. Part C is to calculate the circuit current. This is again Ohm's law, but you're going to have to think very slightly differently. I equals V over R. The opposition to current flow in the circuit we're talking about is impedance. So I equals V 
over z. And if we put the numbers in, 230 over 74.5, and that comes to 3.09 amps. Next step, the potential difference across the resistor. So D and safe space, I'll work across here in a moment. So voltage across the resistor, V equals IR, 3.09 times 40, and that equals Okay, so let's just squeeze the next bit in. Voltage across the inductor, V equals I X L. So the current was 3.09, X L was 62.84, squeeze it in. And then that's gonna give you 194.2 volts. Okay, the final bit I'd like to do, sorry, that was part E. The final bit I'd like to do is to sketch the phaser diagram for this circuit. And it literally is just a sketch. So current would be the first thing that we draw because it's a series circuit. Then I'm just going to guess a scale. It's a sketch, it's not super accurate. So the resistor voltage is going to be in phase with the current. So 123, 25. So in my mind, I've just created a very rough sketch. That's 123.6 volts. So this is VR. VL, apologies, VR, VL. Uh, VL is now going to go up here and it's not far off 200. That's not far off 125. So VL is 194.2 volts. How do I get the result of that? Well, I go across there and up there. I draw it accurately. That is our supply voltage. Here is the angle phi, the angle between the supply voltage and the supply current. If you were to work this back, either draw this really accurately on graph paper, or you use Pythagoras with these two numbers, you'll find that this should come out to 230 volts.